from the editors of Relish.com, we bring you Movable Feast with host Alex Thomopoulos. It's fall in the Northeast, and we are on Martha's Vineyard. It does not get better than this. Now, when most people think of Martha's Vineyard, they think the beach, sailing, fishing. But what many people don't realize is that most of this island is rural and has a thriving agricultural community. And we're going to make the most of it today with two great local chefs. Joining me today is chef, cookbook author, and teacher Jan Berman, who's a culinary staple here and has pretty much been voted best of everything on the island. Also joining me is James Beard Lifetime Achievement Award winner and cookbook author, Professor Jessica Harris, who's not only gonna cook with us, but maybe give us a little history lesson as well. First up, we're off to Gray Barn Farms, where we'll source some stunning lamb and produce and get to taste some of their award-winning grass-fed organic cheeses. Mmm, lovely. It's so delicious. Next, we're off to MV Mycological, a shiitake farm that combines ancient Japanese growing techniques with modern sustainable practices to create some of the best mushrooms in the world. After we've gathered all of our ingredients, we're back here at Beach Plum Inn, a 30-acre waterfront farm with stunning views of the sea. It's the perfect place to host our feast today. It's a celebration of the land here on Martha's Vineyard, and it's happening today on Movable Feast with Relish. Jen and I want to welcome you to the vineyard because this is the vineyard you wouldn't see. There's so much more to the vineyard beyond those bold-faced names and big houses. We are people who love the land. We are people who eat what we grow. We are people who fish. We are people who farm. There's a lot of stuff going on here. The history on Martha's Vineyard is definitely a farming community and fishing. What is your relationship to Martha's Vineyard? Well, you know, I've been here since 1985, and in 1985, I actually started bringing my products to the farmer's market. I was getting to know the farmers. I have established a long-term relationship with them. Because I have such an intimate relationship with so many of those farmers, I've really become a, more of a food advocate for farming and why it's so important. Well, my father bought a house in Oak Bluffs, which is down island, in 1956. So I've been coming to the island since 56. So of course, I've seen all of the changes on the island. I've seen everything from, from Chappaquiddick to the Clintons to the whole rebirth of farm culture on the island is extraordinary just to see how this has changed. And you know, French always say, plus ça, plus ça change, plus ça reste la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Yes. If you look at old images of the island, you can see farming as it took place in the early 20th century. You can see all of these extraordinary things that we are now seeing come back. So it's just amazing, and it, it's so wonderful to be able to witness it, to be able to be a part of it, and certainly to be able to eat it. And trust me when I tell you, there's no better place to taste it than at Gray Barn. This is Alex. This Hi, Alex. Nice to meet you. So hey, nice Jessica. to meet you. How are you? you? So we're here to source some ingredients for our feast tonight. Fantastic. And I hear you have the most beautiful produce. Thank you. Look at you have the coconut. Look at this voluptuous beauty. This what is, is it? Bread for deliciousness. They're a collaboration between a chef, a farmer, and a seed breeder to come up with this squash. That's Vine amazing. ripe and squash. We have to use that for the feast tonight. We absolutely do. And it is so naturally sweet. You do not need any honey, molasses, maple syrup. It speaks its own language. Should we make a puree and turn it into maybe some risotto or a first course soup? I don't know. It looks like the possibilities are endless. They it are. sounds so they good. Are. Well, totally. let's do that for sure. And That's... some. Do you have any time? We do. Oh. And you have rhubarb. And do you grow this on the farm? We do. We have a rhubarb patch on the other side. <laughs> so actually, we started out where you know we added the vegetables after the first few years on the farm. 
We didn't originally start with that. We just had the cows and the cheese, and then we were always raising the pigs. But over the years, we've been adding in bits and pieces, including the veggies. So I think I have what I need. I have my rhubarb and my squash and my thyme, and I think I'll just get out of here and go over to the mushroom farm. Will you meet me there? I will. Great. See you guys later. See Bye, Jan. Jan. Eric, I heard you said my favorite word on the planet, which is cheese. Yes, we have a lot of cheese to choose from here. Uh, Jessica, would you mind helping me do a little cheese tasting for tonight? Oh, I think I could bear up under the strain, yes. <laughs> oh, oh my, my goodness. Isn't this wonderful? This Eric. is what I know Great Warren for, is just the magnificence of the cheese. This it's just so amazing. extraordinary. Thank you. So this all comes from the milk from your cows here on the farm. That's right, 100% farmstead cheese. How many varieties of cheese do you have here on the farm? On a regular basis, we make about five different cheeses. Here today for you to taste, we have the Banneker, which is our cheddar. We have our Bluebird Reserve, which is our special blue. Mm -hmm. And then we have Proof Rock, which is our first cheese that we started making here. It's a little wash drying cheese. And it's the one we're probably best known for. Start with Where the cheddar. Let's we'll start, start with, with the, the cheddar. cheddar, yeah. This is something we just started making this year. So this is sort of a simple, basic cheddar, just mm. starting out. It's so special. I mean, just a, a crisp apple oh. and a bite of this. So you already moved on to the blue. So this I is did, the Bluebird, I this is the Bluebird <laughs> Reserve. And this one's not for the faint of heart. I've had this before, and it is. It's crystally and pungent. Mm, but mm, the creaminess mm. of it. Yeah. It's really it's nice. See, if that's an apple, this is a pear. And you guys have some pears here on the farm as we well. We do, we do have some pears, just a few left. Can you spare us a few? I the think maybe just a few. The butteriness of this with the pear is Ooh. just ambrosial. The this last is... one is the proof rock. It's the first cheese that we made. We wanted to come up with a cheese that made sense here, and it's similar to a lot of the cheeses they make in coastal areas in Europe. Mm, lovely. It's so delicious. I This Banneker cheese, I think I may want to do like a popover with it. I love that cheddar -y. It's a, It's a great cheese to cook with that way. Just, Jessica, what do you think? I'm just going to eat it with a pear. Just, you really don't need much I more am than a, that. I'm a purist and a simplest. It's like, if it's good, don't mess with it. All of these cheeses, you really get those grassy notes, but at, at the same time, they're very complex and very different. We're a certified organic farm, and so we're grazing our animals. We've got our cows, we've got our sheep, we have our chickens following them around in the field. So it's a whole integrated system of everything we do, and then we're taking all that manure, and it's the basis of our vegetable operation. Now, did you say sheep? I did say sheep. We uh -huh. have beautiful katahdins that we keep here. Oh, wow. Might you have lamb? I think I probably do have a leg of lamb oh, hiding in the back somewhere. I'm a happy person. We've got the mint. We've got the lavender. We've got the sea salt. Just an idea of a nice rub with that oh, for that lamb. Oh, that sounds and then beautiful. Sounds garlic, delicious. garlic, garlic. And then that'll set us up perfectly for a dessert of pear. And I love your farming practices. It's the perfect example of how nature works together. If you do it properly and you let nature it's really work in, in symbiosis with each other, it really just, you get a phenomenal product. So well, thank you for saying so. We try really hard. We, I that. can't wait to use the cheese, the, cheese the, lamb, the lamb, the produce from this farm for our feast. Awesome, thank you. So Tucker, at MV Mycological, you just grow shiitakes here? Yeah, that's right. And it's not because we don't like other mushrooms. We really reverse engineered uh, the process to figure out what would grow best here. So it's very much place-based agriculture. We have an abundance of oak trees. The air is really never below 60% humidity. And I know, tell my hair that. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good for mushrooms. And it's good to grow mushrooms essentially shiitake specifically in the exact environment where they evolved in East Asia. And all of the natural ingredients to make a perfect wild harvest shiitake are freely available to us on an island. We don't even use soil. We're just using a waste stream, which is oak logs, which are not timber quality. So it's a very sustainable production. 
This year we added a fully electric skid steer loader. Wow. So we actually use no fossil fuels whatsoever in the production of the mushrooms. How is the growing season here? We use five to six different strains, which all have their own optimal fruiting points. We mix them all together. The statistical mix means the optimal performance will always be met by at least some percentage of the logs in the group. So it doesn't matter, we can't control the weather and we're not climate controlling for sustainability reasons because we really don't have to. So instead, we know that at least one out of the five strains, regardless of weather or time of year, will be performing at peak. That's fascinating. And so what that means for somebody who's putting his product on the plate is that you're getting a real consistent product. And it's so meaty. It really is like the center of the, the plate. We can go check out actually logs that we inoculated and I'll explain that process. Great. Yeah, come on in. So this is this is our little enchanted forest where the logs get to sit for a year and a half after we inoculate them. This is all technique developed by the Japanese. Can you explain what inoculation is in of general? Of course. Yeah, so because we're growing shiitakes on logs and not in pasteurized sawdust bags, which is the industry standard for commodity produced shiitakes, we need to find a way to put that fungus in the log. Actually, how we do that is with the same bag of sawdust that most shiitakes are grown on. So we're taking one of those bags and we're breaking it into 70 parts. And each of these logs, which is inoculated with the mycelium from the bag, is gonna produce much nicer mushrooms because they have this raw, unprocessed food source instead of just the sawdust that they came in on. What one of these inoculation sites looks like when it's successful. You can see this is the sawdust substrate that we put in initially. The fungus in that sawdust oh. is still very much alive. That's all of the white you see. And then if you peel back on the side, you can see that it's also grown into the log. So wow. you can see the white on the interior edge uh -huh. right there. A mushroom growing off of it is a great sign that they're fully colonized and ready to fruit. I definitely want to see where these logs go, what the process is. You mind taking us over there? No, not at all. Can we taste some of these? Absolutely, please, by all means. So let's taste that. Wow. A lot of earth. Wow. That is the best mushroom I've ever had <laughs> in my you. life. So delicious. It tastes almost smoky and sweet. Yeah. I think that's from the wood. The yeah. garlicky flavor at the end, that stays with you. As far as menu goes for our feast, what are you thinking? Do you want to use these fresh mushrooms? Do you want to use them dried? But I'm thinking like a risotto. I would just, with butter and thyme, we don't need to do much. A little bit of you salt. You really don't. A yeah. little bit of butter. I think I'm going to do like a shiitake consomme or a dashi mm. to start our feast and infuse that consomme with the dried shiitakes and maybe slice these really thin. But we should probably get going to our feast. we got a long day ahead yeah, of us. Thank so much. you so much, Tucker. Thank you guys for coming and for the great questions. Good luck cooking. Uh, so we have our leg of lamb from Grey Barn, and what do you think you're gonna do with it today? I'm gonna kind of play around with a kind of Frenchy thing, but I'm gonna add a little vineyard fillip to it. Okay. So I've got some Herbe de Provence. This is gonna be a dry rub, so we've got a little lavender in here. Mm. I've got some dried thyme, some dried rosemary, and in keeping with my I never do anything without playing with it, I always play with my pepper mix. I usually buy the mix of black peppers that has black, red, green, and sometimes pink peppercorns, but I usually add um, cubebs. And then this wonderful sea salt from the vineyard, which is blueberry flavored. Blueberry? So it'll oh, give that's us, gonna go so well it'll with It'll give lamb. us a little bit more. So this is not Provence. This is vineyard. You're really telling part of your life story with this spice rub, aren't I, you? Uh, you? You've know. got a little bit of France, a little bit of Africa, a little bit of the vineyard here. <laughs> you got it. 
I'm just shoving some holes in the lamb. Your mix is gonna go into these holes. You know, people talk about layering flavors. That's what we're doing. We're just layering flavor into this lamb. Oh, the more spice, the better. Just the more spice, the better. And we're saving some for the other side, but we, we got this bad boy. So how are we gonna cook this lamb? We're gonna put him in a high oven at 475 or so. Wow. Okay. And then we're gonna let him go for about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna lower the oven and cook him till he's wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, great. And then what's going with this lamb? Well, the lamb is going to be served with a, um, a mint sauce. And this is me cheating again. We've got mint jelly that basically I have liquefied again. And what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna play with it. I usually use jalapeno because okay. I want it minced finely, finely, finely. Okay. And we're gonna put that in the liquefied mint jelly. Oh, yum. Along with some mint, which is gonna mint it up a little bit more. And then my favorite part, a few glugs of rum. <laughs> well, that's going, I think I'm gonna start my shiitake consomme. I found these beautiful dried mushrooms from MV Mycological, wow. and I wanna start the meal off with something a little cozy, mm -hmm. something a little light, but with, that has a lot of flavor. Jan has an amazing recipe for cheese popovers, and I'm gonna use some of the cheese from Grey Barn Ooh. inside that popover. Yum. Just a nice homage to Martha's Vineyard yeah. and our adventures today. Absolutely. All right, that's we gotta perfect. get you in the we oven. We gotta get Bid Boy into the oven. All right. The dish I'm making for today's feast is a shiitake dashi or consomme. It's a warm, flavorful soup that will start this meal off beautifully. And then I'm gonna add in these dry shiitake mushrooms from MV Mycological. These mushrooms you can eat like potato chips, but we're not doing that today. With any consomme or stock, you always add a bouquet garni, which is essentially a cheesecloth parcel filled with aromatics. And to go with that beautiful stock, I'm gonna make Jan's famous popovers. And I'm gonna incorporate this Banneker cheese that we got from Grey Barn today. I am a terrible baker. I'm gonna put that out there, and I think I need Jan for this. Jan! Okay, Jan, well, first of all, look at this weather. Can you believe it? Welcome to Martha's Vineyard. Thank you. I wanted to attempt to make a popover, but I said, you know what, I'm just gonna let Jan show me your ways. So please, take it away. I'm delighted. So the key for me with popovers are two things. Room temperature eggs, room temperature milk, room temperature water. I do equal parts. And we use high gluten flour. Oh, okay. And you can go ahead and sprinkle that in. That's exactly 1.5 pounds. How much cheese can I add in? Put half of that in there. Great. And then the other half for me. Yeah. Let's get these in the oven, and then you're going to make a risotto. We are. I heard. We're going to make a risotto. Yes. These squash look so sweet and tender. We're gonna take the, the flesh out that just came out of the oven. I just put a little olive oil on it, a little salt, and we're gonna just coarse country blend it. They've actually done tests on these squash for the sweetness and for the smoothness. And you notice it's not cocky, it's not no. uh, dry. It's very it's tender and moist. Mm -hmm. And it's also very sweet. It's gorgeous. So, so beautiful. So simple, right? Over here I have the risotto cooking. It's a little bit under al dente, so it's still got some bite to it. We're gonna add the squash to it, and okay. then we're gonna add a little bit of cheese to it, and then we're gonna saute those mushrooms. Ooh. And what inspired you to make this dish tonight for our feast? Well, I wanted to compliment uh, our lamb. And I was thinking about the risotto and I wanted to bring in the squash and the mushrooms. At first when we visited Eric, I got so excited about the squash, but then we went to the mushroom farm and I said, oh, of course I have to include the mushrooms. You have to bring the two of them together. 
You know what I loved what Tucker said? He talked about the vitamin D in these mushrooms, which I hadn't thought about because the mushrooms that are grown commercially don't have that opportunity because they're not outside. So right. Right there, why would you ever buy anything else, eat anything else. It's definitely a cause to come well, back Well, you know, that's here. the thing about everywhere you go, I'm sure you find those special things that just make it that special place. Right, and make you, know? you want to come back to it. Exactly, and that's why we love traveling around because there are terroirs of taste in everywhere we go, and I think that's what you're doing is finding those. those the different flavors of the land all across the world, that's really. Right. Hello, everybody. Hi. 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 How's everybody doing? Good. Fabulous. Well, about to be wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Well, tonight's feast is a celebration of the land on Martha's Vineyard. Jessica and Jan took me all over to MV Mycological, to Gray Barn Farms for the lamb and the produce, and of course, the exceptional cheese. And so tonight we've prepared for you a feast. To start is the shiitake consomme, featuring some of the shiitake mushrooms grown here on Martha's Vineyard at MV Mycological, and some popovers featuring the amazing cheese at Gray Barn Farms. Jessica, what do you have for us? I have the lamb. I have the amazing lamb from Gray Barn Farms. And what I've done is kind of a, a vineyard mix of herbs and spices. And so it had a wet rub, a dry rub, a little bit of wine, and it's being served with glorious green string beans and some dark beans as well. Wonderful. And Jan. We have the Cahaganut squash with mushrooms and Gray Barn cheese. And we have uh, the pumpkin seeds and fresh thyme. Thank you both for showing me around today. It's been such a treat. And thank you for having us here. It's been our pleasure. And thank you for coming to our feast. Thank you for so coming So we hope you here. enjoy. Yes. yes. And so eat up. Eat up. Jan, what is that? you get a I hope you've enjoyed tonight's meal. To finish off this feast, we have a beautiful cheese board featuring grass-fed, organic, award-winning cheese from Gray Barn Farms. Maybe next time we'll end up feasting in your backyard. We'll see you next time on Movable Feast with Relish. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you, Martha's Vineyard.